Hello, my love, welcome to my channel. If you are in your 20s and you're looking for a way to elevate your life, spiritually, psychologically, physically, this is the video for you. I'm going to share with you my five most favorite books of all time. So grab yourself a cuppa, join in, make sure you stay to the end because that's my ultimate favorite book. And let's get going. So before we get going, please like and subscribe to the channel. This will allow me to grow my channel, get better collabs, better guest speakers, and provide you with more value. So go ahead, like and subscribe, and let's get going. Let's move in with the first book, The Power of Now, Eckhart Tolle. This is an absolute must read for anybody, and specifically if you are below 30, it's gonna give you a really, really, strong anchor point to your spiritual practice um, or just in any way becoming the observer of thoughts and emotions for example the power of now is also the power of you and, the, and and not the not the personal you but the you that is that remains and never was not connected and always is connected and always is an intrinsic part of universal power itself, universal consciousness itself, the one consciousness that underlies all phenomena, the one consciousness of which all phenomena are only a temporary expression. Now what I've noticed in this day and age is that we're talking about spirituality, we're talking about enlightenment, we're talking about all of these different things, raising our consciousness, raising our awareness, for example. and. What tends to happen because our minds, our egoic mind likes to attach itself to things, okay, is that we think of enlightenment as somewhere that we need to go. We need to get to the end of it. We need to become higher and better and cooler and more clever and all of these different things and eventually that will make us enlightened. Now this is just the ego trying to latch on to something in the future, right? And what's so powerful about this book is Eckhart Tolle has a really simplistic and compassionate and empathetic and beautiful way of explaining that enlightenment isn't about a place that we need to go to, right? It's not on our bucket list. It's our ability to connect to the only space that exists, which is now, right now in this present moment. It allows us to release the rumination and the patterns and all of the things that we keep and we've held on to from the past and all of those fears and anxieties that we form that haven't happened yet, that we latch onto about the future. And the book is all about how can we connect to a deeper sense of presence? Because from the space of presence, the present moment, the only place that exists, this is where we can start to become the observer. We can become the observer of our thoughts. We can become the observer of our emotions. We can become the observer of our reactions and the way in which we're moving through life from a much more centered space. And this essentially allows us to come out of the mental clutter and connect to a deeper sense of self and experience the awe, the awe of the moment that we're in. Next, this is a, it's still a spiritual book, but it's not exactly, you wouldn't class it as a spiritual book, okay? But it's an absolute belter. Right, so Annie Lemmert, who is a very successful writer, she's written many fabulous books. This is a book that I read and I thought it was gonna be about writing as I wanted to start to write more and, um, you know, offer my posts and be able to express some of my thoughts, some of the channeling that I do. And also within my own teaching in Kundalini Yoga, I wanted to be able to express some of my own creative ways of teaching the practice through writing. And so I thought I'd get this book and it gave me so much more than learning how to write, okay, from a writer. It's really about overcoming creative obstacles. 
Now, if you've ever heard me talking about Kundalini, the light force energy that resides in all of us, right? This is a, an energy that we tend to refer to as our truest creative potential. And it gets very blocked and stuck and we smother it with all of these rigid ways of thinking and our inability to let go of the monkey mind, right? This book is aimed for writers. It's like a practical guide for writing. writers, as you can see, instructions on writing and life. It really digs into the deep spiritual stories and narratives around life and how we get creatively blocked in life as well. So when we start to move with more joy and more ease and more flow and allow ourselves to be, again, in the present moment, like Eckhart Tolle is explaining, and just allowing our moment to unfold as nature does. Nature is in this beautiful high, high frequency because it just unfolds with the moment and it changes with the moment and it adapts. It's got no resistance there. It just moves forward and grows um, with the seasons and it changes with every single moment of time. Now in this book, Annie Lemmett, Lemmett is talking about how to release some of these emotional blocks, physical blocks, psychological blocks that stop us from being able to move and flow like creativity likes to. She talks a lot about her own experience of writing. She talks a lot about how she experiences life. And it's a deeply, deeply spiritual book. Although you wouldn't see it on a spiritual shelf, as such as a creative shelf um, or a writer's shelf, it's re a, actually a really, really funny, down-to-earth guide on spirituality in many, many ways. And you can relate to it because she talks about herself when she's, you know, doing all of these different things when she's younger, taking some drugs and drinking and just partying and she speaks about it in a very human way and at the same time as coming from an extremely conscious and aware space. So she's funny and it will make you feel joyful when you read the book. Also, it's very, very good for if you are going through a creative block in business, if you're going through a creative block if you're an artist or you are a writer, if you're going through a creative block at work, because we're all creative in many different ways, social media, etc. This book is gonna really allow you to just take one step at a time, bird by bird. You'll know what that means when you start to read the book. Bird by bird, she's talking about just taking that small, tiny little bit, that moment, and then going on to the next moment and on to the next moment and on to the next moment, almost like just seeing the step instead of the whole staircase. And it's a really enlightening book. I absolutely 100% recommend it for anybody running a business, getting into, you know, promoting their own products or, you know, just simply showing up and sharing their true authentic nature online. Get it. It will change the way in which you view creativity an autobiography of a yogi, Yoganandra. As you can see, this is pretty grubby. I've been given a copy of this at every single yoga teacher training that I've done, and rightly so. It's an absolute cult classic again. It's pretty challenging to read, but it's a cult classic. It's all about his travels around India, meeting different gurus and spiritual teachers, and also bringing yoga to the West. So it's a very, very powerful book. In fact, Steve Jobs gave a copy of this book to all of his employees before he died and told them to read it as part of their work, right? It allows you to come to a much deeper understanding of spirituality once you get into it because it's quite a challenge. This is fabulous for anybody who is studying yoga, who is practicing yoga, who is wanting to become a yoga teacher. I would even recommend reading this before applying to become a yoga teacher, for example. This is going to give you a really good stead in really bringing yoga to life, if you like. And there's a lot of talk in this around Kriya Yoga. Kriya Yoga is something that we practice in Kundalini Yoga 
as well. And essentially this is a series of exercises done in a specific order to obtain a specific result. If you want to practice some Kriyas with me, you can go into the description of this video and there's a link in there. It'll give you two weeks free in our community. Okay, so having said that, this is a must, specifically for yoga teachers, but not just yoga teachers. Like I say, Steve Jobs gave it to his employees, but it's a really beautiful sort of narrative for spirituality and life. Let's move on to the fourth book. The body keeps the score. And as you can see, the coffee has been keeping the score on this book face because I've read it so many times. This is a really powerful book for anybody who is going through or doing holistic healing at the moment. What it will do is it will allow you to stay connected to and also motivated to keep up your body work, okay? We have this little saying in yoga, you cannot think your way out of a problem because the issues are in the tissues, right? And this book is talking from a neuroscience point of view exactly what that means, okay? Our subconscious patterns the subconscious brain is more than 80 odd percent of the brain. The subconscious patterns that we hold that sort of dictate our life, these patterns that come from trauma or suppressed emotion or emotional block, emotional, mental, energetic blockages, all of these patterns that we hold, these beliefs that we hold about ourselves, etc., etc., these conditionings that we have kept with us throughout our life, all of these patterns of behaviors store in the subconscious brain and also in our fascia, the sticky spider web of connectivity around the tissues and the muscles, and in our energy centers, in our chakras and our subtle bodies. This book highlights that, how we, when we're having a problem uh, psychologically, it's also really important to recognize that actually the body keeps the score. The body keeps the score. Yeah, not just the head. We need to think about healing on a holistic level. Okay, so we can go to speaking therapy. We can go to cognitive behavioral therapy. We can learn how to watch our thoughts, etc. But we also have to move some junk out of the actual physical body and the energy body at the same time. And this and the tissues and the organs. This is exactly that right? It's going to keep you very connected to your holistic healing practices and make you realize how important these yoga tools are, these somatic tools, these movement-based practices, these conscious movement with breath-based practices are for healing and physical, mental, emotional, spiritual health. It is absolutely worth a read. Please get it. Okay, and the absolute final book. I don't have this book with me because I've given it away many, many times to lots of different students um, and friends and family because it's so good. And I think it's probably one of my favorite books of all time, right? This is not disencouraging these books. These are also my favorite books of all time, but this one has a special place in my heart because it helped me very much through an extremely challenging time during a part of my spiritual awakening when I was going through a hell of a lot of fear. And this really allowed me to ground myself back into my body and into my soul and allowed me to let go of some of this mental fear that I was going through at the time. So the book is called The Untethered Soul. There we go. By Michael Singer. And this book is, well, you can sort of hear what it's about in the, in the title, The Untethered Soul. It's about freeing our inner space. It's about freeing our soul. It's about recognizing that we have a soul and that this space is eternal and infinite and how we can start to move through life from that connection to our soul body. 
and how we can bring that infinite, that infinity into our finite experience. It's a book that brings very, very deep peace into your state. So if you are going through something like a spiritual awakening at this point and you're feeling fearful, I would recommend so highly The Untethered Soul to bring you back to recognizing your soul and allowing yourself to break free from some of these boundaries, these rigid control boundaries that we form in the mind. And it brings you back to a deeper sense of moving through life with more flow and more presence and more ease. It's a magical book, in fact, and I highly, highly recommend it. And if you are below 30 and you can start to read this now, it's really gonna start to allow you to manifest and bring into light what it is you wanna move towards as you're coming into your 30s. So they are my some of my five most, five most powerful and influential books that I have ever read. I hope you've enjoyed this today and lots of love for now. Hi guys, thanks for watching that video with me. Don't forget to like and subscribe, it means the world to me. If you would like to watch any more videos, there's two here just for you.